You and me, we speak the same language. We're in business to make a profit, right? So don't throw it away. Call Sprint. They'll give you a package of services that'll save you money on every kind of long-distance call. Watts lines, private lines, even calls made away from the office. And Sprint volume discounts let you save even more. Look, if you don't want to save money with Sprint, don't tell me about it. Tell your stockholders. Call Sprint. Find out about it. the Mavs at Reunion Arena, only in the Metroplex, on HSE, a new tradition in sports. One more quarter of action left here from Memorial Stadium. It has been gray and cloudy and cold in the 50s all day, but... Uh, not been such a great day for TCU. They trail, but only by 10 to nothing, and certainly are within range. And it's a football team that has not won in the conference this year. All sorts of turmoil. On top of the people that, of course, were dropped from the team, Barry, this team has had injuries left and right. Oh, there's no question. Jim Wacker uh, ended up playing a lot of kids that he thought were going to be human blocking dummies. And now have ended up in being an integral part of his football team. And that is one senior on his defensive unit. Texas has the football. Dodge a quarterback to give uh, again to Metcalf is getting the ball quite frequently here in this uh, fourth quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter now. Pick up of eight up to the 30-yard line. Second down to two. Metcalf's a freshman out of Arlington, Virginia. Very quick feet. We saw that earlier when he stopped on a dive. Longest gain coming into this game was 18 yards against the University of Houston. Second down. Second down and two. Going out wide, top of the screen is Russell Hayes. Down at the bottom is Everett Gay. Gay, again, has not been a pass receiver. They don't really have to throw the ball now. They've got a lead as long as they keep running it. Metcalf's going out outside. He cuts oh. the corner. There's going to be the longest run of his college career because that's going to go all the way. Eric Metcalf, touchdown. Okay, this kid is definitely going to establish his own identity. He is not going to be ended up four years from now as the son of Terry Metcalf. He is going to be Eric Metcalf. A great, great move there. He is going to be Eric Metcalf like it was Eric Dickerson. He's got that kind of pedigree. As the kick is down, it's up and good. A great block there by number 34, Norris, that really sprung him loose. He tight ropes the sideline, and he's got that overdrive, that extra gear. Okay, Dodge. Just hands it off. He was going to try to hit the four hole. Bounces to the outside. Escapes one tackle. A good block on Philander Newton. Now watch, here comes my man Norris with a hellacious block. Goodbye, last horn frog. It is off to the races. And he shows why he is also going to be a track star here at the University of Texas with that great 4-3 speed. 71-yard run on that block on Philander Newton. He was down for a while. They finally had to help him off the field. And there you see Eric Metcalf. Seven carries, 100 yards. 71 of them on one carry. There's only a matter of time before he was going to break one with his acceleration, his ability to just turn it on the dime and cut up field. Texas now with a little more breathing room. 17 yeah. to nothing in the fourth quarter. Now we could see a blowout. I mean, from here, they come up with an interception, take one in, then it could be a you know, route city from here. But TC has played a whale of a football game. There's no question about that at all, folks. All set for the kickoff. Ward will kick off. And it's uh, Brooks and Pete three back. So this forces the no, game plan that. now. Also back is Allen. TC is going to have to put the ball up in the air. Back Allen will take the ball on the three. 
up to the 20, up to the 21-yard line. Tony Allen on the return, about 18 yards to the 21. It'll be TCU's football at this point. This definitely takes Jim Wacker's ball club out of sync offensively. They no longer can afford to set things up and try to be patient. What, uh, Rasco has got to going at some points on the board. Well, in past games, when they've had large deficits, you haven't really noticed a whole lot of change in their method. Now, this is not as large a deficit, but it's still awfully big for the final period. There's an example. This to give inside to uh, the running back. First man through. That was uh, tips. And D.C. Yeah. has not got the ball to burn it all afternoon. Espinosa and McKinney pinching on the stop. Second down. Gain of maybe one. Burnett will come in with the play. Maybe he's going to tell him to get it to him, huh? Jim Wacker's teams. Of course, he played college ball at Valparaiso in Indiana. He's a native of Detroit. Second down and nine. 113, 45, and three coming into this season for his college coaching career overall. Another short game, Jeffrey on the carry. And again, this is a pattern that we've seen, Barry. They just don't seem to be concerned. I, I, it's almost as though we know what we can do, we know what we can't do, so it's foolish to try something we can't do. All right? That's just the way it looks. Five yards, five plays, 91, 205. I'm not knocking Wacker's, you know, theory. But to me, you want to try to get these guys back into the ballgame. One, one side says, let's not make it worse than it is. Yet to me, let's go for broke. Let's do it. Get it done. Well, they're going to throw here on third and seven. They shot it inside, but not enough for the first down. Only about a yard gain. So on a play they needed about eight or nine, they got about two. Richard uh, yeah. Peavy making the stop on uh, Gary Ford. First time he's caught a ball. So that's inexcusable to me to run that short of a pattern. I mean, if you throw it upfield, you still run the rate, you run the chance of getting a pass interference call. 17 to nothing. Chris Becker back to punt. 39 yards his average for this game. Metcalf is back to receive it. He's having to back up. He's got room on the left side. If he cuts inside, fumbles the football, but it'll be retained by Texas. It could not be picked up by TCU before it went across the sideline. So TCU will have the football on their own 32 or 3 yard line, first and 10, leading 17 to nothing with 12.06 to go in the ballgame. Eric Metcalf, I think I said Terry last night. Eric Metcalf. Well, you mentioned Terry. Terry broke down a lot of film and studied a lot of film of various Texas offense. Heard all sorts of spiels and all sorts of propaganda. Was impressed by the fact that Akers undersold. Sold first, come to Texas with his tradition, where you get a great education. But I can't emphasize enough about the track program down here at the University of Texas that really helped clinch it for the Metcalf family. Well, it doesn't hurt to have uh, the track record of the offensive lines that you've had in the past in Texas either if you're running back. I'll tell you something else. Before it's all said and done between here and the end of the balls, this kid's going to throw a touchdown pass. He was a former high school quarterback. Off a reverse. High formation for Texas. Dodge hands it off to Hunter, who's back into the game, and he picks up a quick seven. Scott Harris runs him out of bounds. Floyd Terrell right there. Floyd Terrell is a guy that's used to being around ball carriers. In high school, he averaged nearly 15 tackles a game as a senior. That's an average. That's like in basketball averaging 30 points. The rushing stats, not too close, are they? Second down and five. 71 of those coming on one run. Hunter. Short of the first down, he picks up about two or three. Again, Harris ran him out. Yeah, Harris is a hard worker. You know what he's doing wrong, though? He keeps running out of bounds, and that stops the clock. Texas just wants to get out of this thing. No more injuries. They already lost one key player, quarterback Brett Stafford. That's why we're seeing number 13, the senior for Port Arthur Jefferson, Todd Dodge into the ball game. Metcalf brings the play in. Hunter out. Third down and a long one. You know, we haven't seen tonight Terry Steelhammer. He's made some deep snaps, but Akers resting him right now, and Espinosa and Adams do the job of the two technique of the tackle. Yeah, Steelhammer had a, uh, well, he was hurt a little bit last week, and he could have played more, but again, you haven't you don't seen mean. William Harris and haven't seen Donovan Pitts. Third and one. 
a long one. They give to Metcalf, first down, and about three more as he struggles out across the 45-yard line to the 47 where he slides across the end line. Metcalf has outrushed the Horn Frog. He is the freshman right now with his 104th yard of the afternoon. Breaks it to the outside and goes out of bounds. And Metcalf had been averaging 17.3 a game. Only 3.4 for carry, so this may be a game that uh, really will turn him around. He's been playing well as an all-purpose back, not just the running back. Dodge in trouble. Big trouble. Big trouble. They about made a wish with his yep. two legs that time. Well, Number you saw Floyd Terrell in there. You saw Spradlin in there. Garden Littles. What you also saw, too, was the experience of a senior. He didn't throw the ball up. He had Hayes open. He could have said, hey, we're up by 17. Let me be a hero and go for broke. Uh-uh. Let's not turn the ball over. Let's get out of, the, let's get out of here with a W. 11-16 to play. 17 to nothing, Texas. Six sacks for the Horn Frog defensive unit. And a flag uh, too close to the sideline. Texas being moved back off the sideline. The players were too close. Look, I'm not taking anything away at all from the valiant effort on the part of TCU, but it's obvious that Texas came out today flatter than a pancake. You can talk all you want about seriousness and purpose, about not looking back. So you got to be behind that white line. Only the coach can be out further than that. And those white lines go down uh, between the 30-yard lines, and that's you can't go down any farther than the, near the goal in the 30. It's a restraining area. Of course, on the other side of the field, it's extremely important. That's where the chains are. They have to have room to operate. This side, on the auxiliary marker. Give on the delay to Norris, the fullback, as he's tripped up at about the 33-yard line. Mitchell Benson, the big defensive tackle, got him around the ankle. That's what we talk about, big. We haven't heard too much of Trent Edwards, the freshman from Worthing. Well, he was replaced in the starting lineup by Ron Lewis today. He has played, and he's been on some tackles, but he uh, has not been in as much. Third down, 25. That may have been a quarterback again. draw, and there was no place to draw it because he, the way he dropped back and he wanted to cut forward, but there was no hole at all. And you're right, Spradlin, he's had a pile of them. That he's thing. sort of like the Bill Bates of TCU. He's a kamikaze kind of guy who's played anywhere that Wackers want him. He played his freshman year as a defensive tackle on special teams. Fourth down. Fourth down from the Texas will kick it away. These putters have kept the old leg warm because they've been very busy. Celtic will punt. Brooks back. Uh, he'll take it in the neighborhood of the 20-25 yard line. The officials have a timeout. Clock stops. Got to change football. Steelhammer making the snap. That's the only action he has seen. Still waiting for this uh, play to get underway. And the kick is up. Coming down to about the 23-yard line. And Brooks has run out of bounds at about the 27, where TCU will have it first and 10. They'll put it in play there when we return. 9.20 left, 17 Texas, nothing TCU on Home Sports Entertainment. Follow the excitement of University of Florida football. From the opening kick to the final play. All the hard-hitting action of one of college football's top teams. Watch the Gator football replay. The NCAA Women's Championships offer a highway to successful opportunities, challenging competition, excellent education, victories and medals, friendship and team spirit. 
This and more can be seen at any of the 34 NCAA Women's Championships. Get involved with college athletics. Attend an NCAA Championship this season. For dates and sites, write NCAA Championships, Box 1906, Mission, Kansas, 66201. The scrimmage is at the 32-yard line. Score, Texas 17, TCU nothing. Texas led 10 nothing at the half. They scored their second touchdown on a spectacular 71-yard run by Eric Metcalf. That coming in the second half. And their first touchdown was a crazy play. Edwin Simmons busting loose. Just knocking defensive players all over the place. Philander Newton knocks the ball out of the sand, and Russell Hayes picks it up in the end zone for the Texas touch. David Rasko, the 5'11 freshman out of Houston, Westchester, now a flag, or a whistle, to be precise. Both of these clubs, of course, uh, have some games left. Texas will be playing Baylor at home next week. You think that won't be a big one, as you see the call. And they'll be at Texas A&M uh, in two weeks, and that, of course, is always a big one. TCU will be playing A&M next week, and of course that will be our HSE Southwest Conference Game of the Week. And that's it. They're done. So they'll wrap it up next week. It is 17 to nothing. Texas with 9:18 left. First down, 15. Earth Texas uh, Christian has the football now. As the ball comes across the game of about a yard or two. Tony Jeffrey to carry. Chalmer Adams in on the play on the bottom. Second down. Another valuable lesson for Jim Wacker's football team. You know, life its own self. Uh, Dan Jenkins' great book was a parody of his alma mater, TCU, about recruiting and buying of players. When that man found out what was going on, he blew the whistle, said, Wacker ain't buying anybody, kicked the seven players off. It's been a disaster. But a lot of good is going to come out of this for his football team as they get the completion. And Jeffries gets knocked down. That was a little, about the only time they throw the short type pass to the back. It is Jeffries. And Jeffries knocked out Jeffries. Eric Jeffries of Texas, number one, on number 27, Tony Jeffries. Roll left. A high percentage completion. But again, these should have been done in the first quarter, not in the fourth quarter when you're down by 17. They're down at eight. Thank you, coach. <laughs> 17 to nothing. Rasko, Jeffrey the blocker. Rasko throws it up the middle and he bounced it. Incomplete. That was intended for Delaney, number 83. But it was underthrown. Of course, they did lose a quarterback to injury in Scott Ankrum, right. but Ankrum was not a run, was not a passing quarterback either. He just had blazing speed. He got Ankrum, he got Rasko, and he got Giles next year in spring practice. You talk about competition. Two of them will have had a lot of experience, Ankrum and uh, Rasko. Here's the kick on fourth down. It's high. Metcalf going to fair catch it. At the 31-32 yard line, Texas will have the ball right there. And once again, we'll put it in play. If you'd like to study the form of punters, this has been your game because they've been sure putting it up in the air a lot today. Every time I think of punting here at the University of Texas, I think of the greatest college punt I've ever saw, that's Russell Erksleben. My, oh my, how we used to change field position in the mid-70s. Todd Dodge conferring with Fred Akers. He probably aged a little bit today when he saw Brett Stafford go down, but uh, Todd Dodge has answered the call. Well, he's in the situation now where it's really not hard to play quarterback because you've got a 17-0 lead, 7.53 to play. If you can hand off, you can play quarterback. Good crowd at the Memorial Stadium uh, today. Some empty seats, of course, down in the one end zone area and in the extreme corners, but considering the weather, I would have to say it's a fine crowd. It's not Texas football weather. It's more like Minnesota in... Uh, September. Under thrown and intercepted. Well, that was a surprise, wasn't it? They threw the ball. I'm surprised. Well, I told you about Donovan Pitts. They went to him. And the man who got it was Ricky Rugely, and I'm really surprised. I'm kind of stunned. I guess that's why I have nothing to say. Why are they throwing here? Well, just to kind of let the world know that Dodd still has got the ability to go deep. In that case, it's not deep enough. Huh. Was intended for Pitts, who did get in. 
I guess he wanted to play, huh? So if you get him in there, running deep. All right, here we go. It is first and ten for T. Sealy. Is the give inside again? And that's about as surprising as yeah. The, no, it's not as surprising. Well, to me, they, they could come out, Greg, and run a trip formation, put a couple of guys in the slot, and try to stretch the defense. Give the passing game the confidence that, yeah, we can score in one play. If you just look at these last two plays, you'd say, who's ahead? <laughs> who's trying to rally in this game? Texas is going for broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Texas that's ahead, 17 to nothing with 7.17 to go. Sean Millsap and Delaney both wide left. A lot of time. Bad pass. Almost intercepted. That was almost, well, like who's it going to? It was too high for Delaney and too low for Millsap. So it's a incomplete pass. Third and eight. And let's see, coming in with a play is uh, Keith Burnett, the Houston Yates X. There's quite a speedy guy. Doesn't have the greatest hands, but he's working on them. Got a lot of speed, but he hasn't been a receiver today. Until now. Did he catch it? If he, no, nope. no, I'll tell you what, he looked like he had pretty good hands on that, because that would have been an outstanding catch, and he had a chance at that one. He would have probably been out of bounds. Let's see, we may have an ISO on this one. Uh, he runs an out pattern here. Plants, cuts, where's the football? Rasko's timing on that was not good. Yeah, he would have been out of bounds, I think, if he yeah. had even had caught. When the receiver made the cut, that ball should have been released. He waited until after he made the cut and read it there. But that just comes with timing. you got a freshman quarterback. Fourth down. One of our lower punts and short. And killed by TCU at the 38-yard line. Texas will have it at their own 38, leading 17 to nothing with 6.49 to go. Next weekend, we'll be taking you up to Fort Worth and Eamon Carter Stadium as the Horned Frogs take on the Texas Aggies. That's the final game of the year for uh, TCU. The game with important ramifications, certainly for A&M's bowl picture. We'll have it for you on a delayed basis next Saturday night at 10.30 and then Sunday at 9 o'clock. That's Texas A&M versus TCU next weekend on HSE. We may be kicking this one over again. Flag down on the 22-yard line. Well, I'd like to see another punt. Okay, I mean, be the, uh, <laughs> what about the 20th one of the game? All right, it's a first down, so they don't have to kick it again. First down for TCU following that holding penalty. It was a holding penalty on the defense, uh, which is one you don't see too often when... Uh, holding on a punt play on the team that is receiving the punt. That's a little rare penalty. Rasko, gonna keep it and get good yardage with it. Down to nearly the first down marker. He's up to the 45, Richard Peavy and Eric Jeffries on the stop, but Rasko picks up at least nine. And if you're, you're watching at home and wondering why number six, Stephen Braggs never came up and made it. He had the pitch man in that case. So he'll slice inside the corner here. Wrist it up. There goes the corner. His method right there is to take the pitch man, regardless of whether he could have the tackle or not. Boy, it looks like they lost a yard on that mark, too. That ball uh, is carried up for a one-yard gain. It'll be third down and one. I was just watching where he went out and then when they put the ball in play and looked like he lost another yard. There have been some marks today. McKinney and Hager in on the top tackle. But, yeah, here's Mr. Yeah, the refrigerator. They're calling him what, the igloo or the ice box? Yeah, I think the ice, or the ig igloo maybe. Igloo. Right? Yeah, it's the igloo. Well, here he comes. Mitchell Benson, 288 pounds. Marked up from 265 when the uh, media guys were printed. Uh, timeout. Oops, he wants timeout. Yeah, he, he probably wants to get some rosin on his hand in case he wants to throw the ball. What do you think? Uh, I don't know, but... Uh, I don't think so either. Jim Wagger scratching his headset there. That uh, leaves them with one timeout. TCU with one. And Texas has one. Six minutes and six seconds remaining. <laughs> Last week, Wacker's doing his coach's show and his, you know, the, the scoreboard out there and, uh, and Tech kept... Uh, 
looking like a computer and some video game. He said, I want to just call him with David Rowe and play Super Frog and forget about coaching and just escape. <laughs> you can't help but love a guy like that. I mean, he's taken a lot of reps. He, he wrote a, a, you know, a letter to all this conference coaches about cheating. That fell on some deaf ears. Uh, he's come out with some things. A, a lot of folks were called him very naive and stupid for turning, uh, you know, Davis and the other kids in. But you have to admire a man who stands by the courage of his convictions. He's trying to make football fun, as we're going to see right now with Benson. And that graphic uh, definitely tells the story. One out of 13 on third down conversions. And the one they got, Benson doesn't care. Get, instead, the quarterback, Rasco, does. And they use Benson as a decoy. And Rasco gets the first down. Allard on the tackle, but not before they picked up the first down. You know, that, yeah. that is the value of him almost as much as what he does. He's got to occupy there. a couple of people. I mean, a linebacker and a safety. The safety's got to say, he better not, not, not be coming my way. And the linebacker's got to be gritting his teeth and said, I knew all those hours pumping iron would pay off for something. <laughs> First down. Uh, I don't believe it. They actually have a slot over here. Tony Allen is uh, wide left, one of them, as Rasco is not going to throw to anybody. He just runs out of bounds after a one-yard gain. Allen is right near him, so he just stepped out. They had two men on the yep. left side. Allard ran the quarterback, Rasco, out of bounds. But again, they're, they're, he's rolling to the right. The receivers are on the left. And your point that you made earlier is if he does throw it to him, he's got to throw it way across field. I think people forget that. They think how far the pass was thrown they see from the 40 to the 30, and they forget that field is 55 yards wide, and if he's on one corner, he's throwing that ball a long way. Second down, 10. Give inside to Jeffrey. Good run by Jeffrey as he spins off the first tackle and picks up about seven. Down to about the 45-yard line. Richard Peavy grabbed him. Richard Peavy, number 42. Remember, Barry, when no one wore glasses when they played football? They'd rather be blind than, uh, <laughs> than wear glasses. Each team had just one It's amazing how many guys are wearing them now after Dickerson set a new rushing record last year. Yeah. Third down at two. Rasko on the keep, now the pitch. Jeffries is stopped. Oh, good defensive play by Stephen Bragg. You know, we're talking about Stephen Bragg's early when he didn't make the tackle, he took the option. There's an example where the corner has got to come up and make the force, and he can't weigh more than 175 pounds. Well, they, they say 173, and if that was before the season, he probably weighs less now. Okay, he reads. The moment he sees that it's not going to be a pass, Alex strings it out. There's Peavy. Ready to force, he just wraps him right up and gets some support from Ty Allard. Now it's fourth down, and do we have, uh, da, 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 da. no we don't, or do we? No we don't. Just have extra blockers. They don't have the big guy in, and this isn't going to make it. Nope. Rasco was strung out down the line of scrimmage. Chris Gulliban came up and got help from Richard Peavy, and it'll go over on down to Texas. See, in, in a case like that, if I'm Rasco, I want to call a timeout. You got one left. That's the time for it. They got that play going in too much of a hurry. Well, they didn't make the switch and didn't bring in their extra beef, and they just tried it with extra blockers. And there you see extra blockers up front. You know, 73 was the man who was the extra blocker there at Brazil. And, of course, then they ran the other way, so it didn't make any difference. First and 10 for Texas. Four minutes and 21 seconds remaining. Eric Metcalf. Pick up of seven, Ricky Rugely making the stop. The underlying story in this ball game, the injury to Brett Stafford. With Baylor and with Texas A&M standing in the T-Super's way to a January 1st state in Dallas, Texas, that could loom very important. And again, it would be poetic justice if Texas were to knock off Baylor and A&M and do it behind the throwing of Ty Dodge. Second down at four. Yeah, that's short. King of the two yards by Metcalf. It'll be third and two. Arkansas, of course, came into play this weekend five and one in conference play with SMU and A&M remaining. So, of course, the A&M game being played uh, on Saturday night and SMU, their final game of the year. Baylor five and one. A&M, Arkansas, TCU, and Texas. Uh, 
Arkansas game, of course, being played Saturday night. And the other two, they, they got a test. First down for Metcalf and more. Quick, speedy feed as he picks up about eight yards. He's going to have a lot of defensive Ricky coordinators Ricky taking six. deep breaths by the time it's over. You know, the kind that he touches the ball and you go, I hope this isn't the one where he just bursts it up the middle. Here comes Gene Shelton out of the ball game. Champagne will go into play center. Looks like it's a gimpy ankle on the part of Metcalf. Tries breaking it to the outside. Notice the glide he's got when he ducks that shoulder in. You just tell the natural gait he's got as a runner. Yeah, he got kind of twisted over. You could see that uh, ankle was twisted over. 123 yards in the afternoon for Eric Metcalf. And he didn't carry the ball, I don't believe, in the first half at all. The first carry was in the third quarter. Put that on 11 carries. The big one, of course, the 71-yard touchdown to put this football contest out of reach. As the Dad's Day crowd of about 70,000 here in Austin gives him a big hand. And I go in the locker room, I'm going to ask Gene Shelton one question. If he has petitioned Fred Akers, but he, you know, he, was, he was Gene Gene the Coke machine because they said he was so strong he could bench press the big Coca-Cola machine down there in the weight room. I'd like to see if maybe they're going to put him in once and he could be, instead of the refrigerator, be the Coke machine. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Hunter, first down. Crossed to about the 27-yard line. You know, the, the impressive Harris. thing about Hunter is he's got great vision. Everyone talks about the speed and the quickness and all that, but he sees defenses. He reads. He comes in. He just checks right there, bounces back, and again, he looks to the outside, always looking to see where pressure is coming. No one does it better in football than Tony Dorsett of the Cowboys. Garland Littles and Rusley finally stopping him on the play. First and ten. Ball is on the 27. Hunter again. Bang! Down he was, brought behind the line of scrimmage, and a very number happy Kent Kent Trammell. Kent Trammell. Dropping number 26, Charles Hunter. I'll tell you, you can't help but admire the enthusiasm. These guys are getting their brains beat out. 63 points last week, uh, 51 against Baylor earlier. And these guys keep up coming up high-fiving and, and doing their little dances. you got to love college football for the enthusiasm that it brings. Less than two minutes to go now, minute 40, and Texas leads it 17 to nothing. I want to take an opportunity to remind all of our folks in the HSC viewing area, get out there and support your favorite high school throughout the state of Texas. Play our football team time. You're going to see the best high school football in America right here in the Lone Star State. The kid from Odessa, 17 carries, 50 hard-earned yards. Red Acres conferring things over with Todd Dodge, 136 to go. That was Texas' final timeout. This time it didn't go make any difference, and as we pointed out, it didn't really make any difference the fact that they didn't score, didn't get the clock stopped in the first half, as it turned out. It's just one of those what might have been important plays. Well, Texas now. has the games left with uh, Baylor here, their final home game, and A&M. Now that obviously is a very tough road to hoe. They have to hope that one of their arch rivals, perhaps, SMU, can uh, knock off Arkansas, or perhaps uh, they get good word from the game Saturday night. There's the remaining Longhorn schedule, the Baylor Bears, and then at the Aggies. And I'll tell you, that, that's tough. Play incomplete again. Surprise, surprise, as they throw the ball. It was intended for Monty Daly, the El Paso senior, with a minute 31 to play. Our Vanguard fire crew, of course, especially those of us that have been outdoors freezing to death all day. <laughs> Got a good view here in the broadcast uh, location at Memorial Stadium. It's just that it's outdoors. Yeah, we're fortunate, though, that there was no rain today on us. Even though we got the overhang, the way those winds can shift. Again, they set up the screen pass out to Hunter. I'm, I'm a little mystified, but, you know, I've seen so much in college football this year, Barry, that doesn't follow the so-called no. book that I guess I better quit being mystified. And it, it, it appears right there that's what Fred Akers wanted. He put his hands on Todd Dodge's shoulder and gave him a couple of plays there for the last minute of the ball game. Could he have possibly done that to set up 
hoping they'd be incomplete to give uh, his field goal kicker and a chance. And the kid's going for record. Yeah, I don't know. Plus the fact he gets mom makers off his back. See, Danny gets some playing time every time. Oh, which is, he's the holder. Jeff Ward going for his 17th field goal. 49 yards, flat, line drive, good. He got it. <laughs> he's so laid back, though. He just kind of looked at it nonchalantly and got up instead of giving a high five, gave a low five to Danny Akers. So Ward with his yep. 17th field goal this season ties the all-time single season Longhorn record set by John Goodson. <laughs> Watch his reaction here. There's the kick, little knuckleball. Yeah, Akers is jumping up and Jeff goes, yeah, so what? That's what they gave me a scholarship for. I'm supposed to do that. He had five field goals versus Arkansas, of course. That was the difference in that football game. His dad was an ex-NFL official, Ed. And I don't know, we, we might, it's kind of late now. I should have mentioned this during the course of the game, but if you catch him on the sideline, he's usually off by himself. No, that's not him. That's Bevo. <laughs> <laughs> Always one guy down in the truck that's going to try to bag us. <laughs> now, he is normally off by himself, too. Yes. What does Bevo think about these football games? I, you know, you got to think. I mean, here is your big longhorn steer. What the heck am I doing standing out here? And especially every time they shoot that darn cannon. Yeah, but it's better than last week in the game. He's at a TCU where at, the, at Tech where the SPCA and the Humane Society was going to rest that poor horse. Allen will uh, bring the ball off on the kickoff. Tony Allen strings uh, has strung out and he's brought down about the 15 yard line. A minute 13 left to play. And TCU will have the ball for what more than likely will be one last time. 20 to nothing the score. Texas. And there's the drive. I want to thank uh, Bill Little, father of David R. Spotter, Doug Smith, and the staff here at the University of Texas, athletic director Dwight Dodd for making our home sports entertainment production a very easy one this afternoon. First down. Rasko going to throw it. Little screen. He's got his man. That's Ford. And he picks up for about... Take that. That was not the number I thought it was. That was uh, Stokes. That's Stone. Stone, rather. I'm sorry. 85. Yeah, he's the kid who dropped the third down pass earlier that bounced off his, uh, his hands. Oh. Must be late in the game. 41 seconds to go. Another screen. This one out to tips. Uh-oh. Where's he going to go? Nowhere. He ran right back into the teeth of it. He lost yardage on that completed pass. Thomas Aldridge, Eric Jeffries in there. There you see the tail of the scoreboard. 227 yards rushing for Texas, 53 carries. And they uh, didn't really throw the ball all that well. They, they threw it. Uh, they didn't really have to throw it well the way things went today. This may come under the category of winning ugly for Texas, but it was a big win for them in the sense that with the exception of the injury to Brett Stafford, they come out of the game unscathed. They get an opportunity to rest Steel Hammer, Llewellyn, couple of other people on their defense get ready for crunch time the next two ball games and they keep of course uh, the opposition off the scoreboard and David McWilliams will like that well you know big time Texas has given up some points this year in some games so well 44 to SMU for instance uh, Tech got 21 on them when Tech in the second half discovered their new offense which they had not been using all year the second half they got 21 Houston got 24 off of them Stanford got 34 off of them. So they've given up some points, so their defense will be pleased, certainly, to, to throw a shutout. 28 seconds left. Texas 20, TCU nothing. We'll see TCU again next week. They can actually build off of this, uh, despite the fact that it's going to be a defeat. They have uh, played the Longhorns at home well. And the, uh, that ball is caught by Delaney, and he steps out of bounds just as he catches it. Five seconds expire on the clock. Third and about three. Eric Jeffries bounced him out. This would be the first shutout for Texas since 1972 when Houston beat Texas, or beat, uh, when Houston beat Houston, when Texas beat Houston, I said 72-82. 
and that was a 50 to nothing shutout. And by the way, we also might mention that, uh, of course, this would be the eighth win of the year for Texas as they measure for the first down, and they got it by about an inch. This also would make 18 straight victories for Texas over TCU. The last time TCU won was back in 1967 in Austin, anyway. That was 24-7. A real heavy, one-sided series. Twenty to nothing with twenty-three seconds left. First down. They've had the lights on most of the game. This is the type of day where the lights really have very little effect. In fact, you've got a better picture on television. Delaney with a nice catch for a first down. That was a multiple pattern. They actually had three receivers out there. Now you wonder why weren't they doing that earlier in the ball game? Yeah, I'm wondering, but I suppose some of the fans are too. I was about to say that you've actually got a better picture on your television screen than the people in uh, the stadium have because we're able to augment it electronically, brighten it up a little bit. That pass is incomplete. Six seconds left. Well, they've like gone Geist, our director, and of course uh, Bob Steinfeld, our producer, and all the rest of the people on the HSE truck. You will see some of those names. You'll see all those names in just a few moments. 20 to nothing uh, here with six seconds. Second down. 10. Should be the last play. Rasco throws the ball. Complete. And out of bounds Burnett, but that's it. Ball game's over. And a final score, Texas 20, TCU nothing. Barry and I will be back to quickly recap this one in just a moment on Home Sports Entertainment.